Hello everyone, Robert Saunders here, and today I wanted to talk about the SDC, the storage data client that we use to consume the storage deployed with Apex Navigator, deployed as Apex Block. So this is a lot of questions, of, a lot of clients have came up and said, Rob, when I deploy uh, using Apex Navigator to AWS Apex Block, when I deploy that storage, how do I consume it? Well. We do that with the SDC right there in the middle. There's three kind of core tenants, the SDS, which is our storage nodes that we stand up, the SDC, again, why we're here today, and the MDM, the metadata manager, which is kind of the traffic cop, does all the management, understands all the monitoring, understands all the, the connectivity. You're going to see when I wire up the SDC here in a moment, why the MDM IP addresses are important for that initial config. So let's get started. So first, a few use cases. Well, the storage pool is an aggregation of all of the drives and the compute that makes up this cluster. That's why we, our performance levels are pretty much unmatched. It's beautiful to see. Now the SDC uh, presents a volume to the OS and you'll see that here in a second of how that's consumed. I'm gonna use a Windows uh, version. It's the same also when you present to a Linux host. And then that volume knows how to get, the SDC knows how to reach out to all the SDS nodes, so it makes for a massively parallel type of performance environment when you're accessing the data. So let's get started. Again, here's that massively parallel. On the left there, you have the SDC and the C there, and all the S's in yellow are the, is the cluster, and then the volumes that are presented from that cluster that are consumed by the storage data client. So here we are in the Apex Navigator home portal. If you're familiar with my other videos, you go to Manage Storage, and now we're going to drill into Manage Cloud Deployments. And here we see a couple deployments. I have one that's actually uh, Apex file storage at the bottom and Apex block storage. So I have two different file types, two different endpoints deployed with Apex Navigator. But today we're talking about the Apex block storage for AWS. So we'll click on that and we'll drill into it. And now we see some deployment details here. So what I'm looking for here is to go into PowerFlex Manager. So I'll log in. Remember at the beginning I talked about the MDM the metadata manager, those are the IP addresses I want to find. So inside of PowerFlex Manager, resources, onto view details. And now here I have the MDM cluster and I see the IP addresses there. Those IP addresses are the exact ones of the private subnet inside of AWS that we set up when we deployed uh, Apex Block with Apex Navigator. So it's all presented here in the same UI that if you're familiar with PowerFlex, it's the exact same thing for Apex Block. So we'll record these roles and their IP addresses. This is just one way, and I wanna show you another way here in a second to get to the same information all using Apex Navigator as your single jump off point. So there's the co-resident SDS storage nodes. We talked about that. Now let's go over to Cloud IQ and let's take a look and see what kind of information we can find in Cloud IQ. Well, we'll go to Manage Systems here. And then we see a few different systems here. I have my on-premises PowerFlex here in my lab. I have a block deployment and then that same file deployment. We saw this earlier in Navigator. Now we're looking at it from the view of Cloud IQ. So we'll go into that same block deployment and let's see if we can find the MDM information here. And I'll bet we can. If we go to the Inventory tab, and then over to Resources also, well, look, there they are. There are the, there's the roles, the three MDMs, primary, secondary, and the tie break, breaker, and the three IP addresses, those exact same IP addresses that we saw um, in uh, PowerFlex Manager. So a couple different ways, whatever way um, suits you best, you can get those IP addresses. So now I'm connected here to an AWS Windows instance that I stood up in, in AWS, and I want to consume 
the Apex block storage that I deployed with Apex Navigator. So what am I gonna do? Well, first I'm gonna download the SDC from Dell. I've got that over there in the C, user, C Users Administrator PowerFlex SDC folder. And then I'm simply going to execute this. I'm using PowerShell and you can see there um, the MDM. This is why it was important for me to get the MDM IP addresses. That is all I need to do. I execute the, the MSI and I give the, the parameters of the MDM IPs. That's it. So there's the, uh, the, the file that the MSI that I want to execute. There's the IP addresses that we pulled from either PowerFlex Manager or Cloud IQ. And here goes the install. Super easy. Takes only a few seconds to install. And it's all done. Click Finish. Okay, so now the SDS or SDC is installed on my Windows Jump Host. Now I need to consume it. So what do I need to do? Well, first off, there's the SDC host that's now represented back in PowerFlex Manager. That IP address, and I'll show you here in a second, is exactly the same IP address that's here, just to prove it. And there it is, 10.02.11. So I know the SDC is talking back to Apex Block, and I can see that in PowerFlex Manager. Now it's time to add a volume so I can consume the storage. So I'll go to create a volume. I'll just create a single volume here, call it data01. I'll call it, I'll give it 32 gigabytes in size and I'll make this one thick so I can actually see that I'm consuming some storage here. Pick the storage pool and click create. Great. Volume was created successfully, perfect. Now the volume was created in Apex Block via PowerFlex Manager and now I have to actually present it to the SDC host. So you see on the right there, I have the disk manager from the Windows environment, if you're familiar with that. And I'll simply map this volume to the host and watch it appear on the right. It appears pretty much right away. So I'll click map. And boom. There it is, all ready to go. Yes, it's presented to. Now we have to format it. Super easy to do. You can automate all of this too. I'm just showing it from a GUI perspective so you see the steps, but all of this can easily be automated with PowerShell from a Windows environment or inside your, your pipelines for a DevOps tooling. So I'll give it a letter. I'll give the volume a name. Everybody who's familiar with Windows has done this hundreds of times, if not thousands. And now the volume is successfully presented um, to the Windows host for consumption. We can start consuming the storage using the SDC. That was super easy. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it.